Hi guys! So I have another video I want to share with you today. Today it's about drinking. Yeah, yeah. Spiritual drinking, of course. You know, everything I tell is not about like, physical, but basically the spiritual aspect of it. So today I'm talking about drunk living, drunk driving, being drunk. And the question is, are you drunk? Okay. Okay. <laughs> So, here are my notes, right? So, bear with me, because this, you, you can't read this. Hey, Alright, I, I can't read. It's going to take a while. I looked over it before, but like, oh my gosh, I'm like, how am I going to share this if I can't read my own handwriting? Alright, so, let's talk about traits of drunk people. You know, they slur, they, you know, they, they can't concentrate, they think they can achieve things, but they can't really achieve things. Um, they don't have self-control, they stagger, they lose control. Okay, so we stagger like the drunk is in the flesh. When we are drunk, we, be, okay, we can be drunk in the flesh and we could be drunk in a bad way in the spirit. Setting aside being drunk in the spirit, that's something totally different. Being drunk in your carnal flesh is terrible. Yeah, we stagger like the drunk is in the flesh. We slur. We can't speak the truth. When we slur in our spiritual walk, we can't speak the truth. Either we can't speak the truth or we speak in the truth, but not speaking the truth in love. Or we think what we're saying is the truth. That's a way of staggering when you are spiritually drunk. Um, we say things that we think are right um, compared to vision. Uh, okay, so when drunk people are like drunk, right? They can't see right. They think what they see is what is actually there, but it's probably not really what they see, right? So when we are spiritually drunk, we think that we have discernment. We, okay, we think we have discerning of spirits. That's, yeah, it's a difference. <laughs> discerning of the spirits is one of the gifts you want to have discernment. Discerning of spirits. And, yeah. Um, what can we really see? Uh, I can't read this. Oh, yeah, so what we think we see is a part of God's will. So that's one thing that we forget to check up because we're so drunk, we think everything is all good. Um, when we are drunk, we lose control. When we are spiritually drunk, we lose control of our lives, we lose control of our walk with Christ. And, um... Yeah, we lose control of our soul. You see how terrible it is to be drunk and, like, spiritually drunk? You know, what are you drunk on? You could be drunk on yourself, drunk on material, possession, your future, money, health. All those things, those physical things that you think, you know, can save you. When at the end of the day, it melts away and you are left to face Christ and you have nothing to say to him because you know how terrible you do with your life like it's so depressing right that's why we should not be drunk in our spiritual walk and um yeah <laughs> um our time on earth is precious and so we have to make each day count don't spend your life living drunk and thinking you're gonna be sober when are you gonna be sober because you don't know that if tomorrow is promised then the bible says always be vigilant Something like that, right? It's in the Bible. Always be vigilant. You can't be drunk, especially in the spirit, okay? Like, the Bible doesn't, like, um, prohibit being drunk in the flesh, you know? Um, but to be spiritually drunk, that's you putting your soul on the line, not just your life. You're putting your soul on the line. So, okay, and I'm going to talk about outlaw. Um, an outlaw is someone who is outside the law. When we are drunk, we are outlaws. When we are drunk in the spirit, we are living outside of the law of the, you no, know, of God. You no, know, God's law, God's love, the liberty. We're living outside of that because our minds are so distorted. We think we are on the right path and we think it's straight. When at the end of the day, we are not. And um, lawlessness, you no, know, it's, it's also another definition for outlaw. And to be law, to be in lawlessness is to be is the absence. Lawlessness is the absence of love. So when you're drunk, you don't have love in you. You don't have 
God's love. You don't understand. You're too drunk. You're too drunk to understand God's love. You. Um, and we can't, when we're drunk spiritually, we cannot identify ourselves with Christ. We do not know our identity in Him. We think that the things that we are drunk on are the things that are our identity. But at the end of the day, and I keep saying that, because it's true, at the end of the day, when those things are taken away from you, what is your identity? See, that's why it's good to be sober in the spirit so we can know our identity is found in Christ. Okay, um, yeah, I'm trying to read this. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about what we can do to be, what we can do to be sober and how sober people live. Okay, okay, so sober people, you must, to be sober, you must deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow Christ. To be sober, you must repent of your sins. Repent is, oh, da 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 da, I'm walking towards my sin. Yeah, because it's so enticing. Repenting means turn the other way and walking towards Christ because you see that He's the person that you're supposed to be going to, right? Um, and you must stay in the attitude of prayer. The Bible says, pray without season. Whatever situation you are in, pray. I mean, I, I don't usually sit down and pray for a long period of time. Whatever I'm going through, I'm just constantly talking to God all day. So, prayer is a conversation with God. You don't have to be, oh, majestic Lord on high, the one who sits on the throne. No, God, He doesn't care about all that. You know, He, yes, God is a humble, but He's a jealous God. And He understands you, and He understands your heart. He doesn't look on the outside. Do not be like that Pharisee, you know, outside the temple, like, whoa, whoa, praise Jesus, all the things I've done. Be that tax collector humble in your prayer have a conversation with god right have a conversation with god like you're talking to your best friend he understands you that is prayer that's one way to pray i know some people can't pray like that some people go in like especially when you're in the spirit oh my gosh it happened to me before oh my gosh all right um and they break away from you no know, their drunkenness and the things that hold them apart from Christ. Um, and I'll have this song, Jesus Take the Wheel. Let Jesus take the wheel if you think that you're too drunk. Let him take the wheel of your life. Get it? Get it? Get it? He can drive and you're not going to crash into some pole because you thought your vision was right. You're not going to crash into a terrible situation that could take away your soul, take away your life you know, permanently, like... Not permanently. Take away your life, like, for real. Um, let him also be the captain of your soul. When you are sober, you don't have to fear that you're going to lose your soul. Okay? Um, yeah, I can't read the rest. But I have one more um, phrase to tell you. And this is it. If you did what God told you to do, you don't need the approval of others. And I just end up with that. And I want to read one Bible verse that you can chew on. It's Proverbs 25, 28. Okay. Okay, the verse says... Uh, Alright. I'm there, I'm there. Okay. Oh, I'm not there, I'm not there. Okay, alright. As a city broken through without a wall is the man with no restraint for his spirit. That's how a drunk man is. A city without walls. Jerusalem, your city strength, power is measured by your wall. So how thick is your wall? Ask God to rebuild you up and sober you up. Because time's is running out. Okay, bye guys.